Well, they say they break the season down into three parts, the preseason, the regular season, and then the postseason. We are one game into the postseason as we welcome you aboard DC TV Sports. Brent Palvinot alongside Scoop Miller as you are looking at a live shot from about half court at the hangar. Ayersville High School Gymnasium last week. The Pilots elected to play their first round game against Hicksville and dispatched the Aces 58 to 19. Now, as you would expect, the opponents start to become tougher, more difficult as the cream separates from the crop, as it will be another in-conference opponent out of the GMC, the Bulldogs of Edgerton. They enter tonight's contest 10 and 12 overall, 2 and 5 in the Green Meadows Conference. Again, the Pilots just one setback against 22 victories and a perfect 7 and 0 oh to be the sole heir of this year's GMC Conference title. Again, we are on board with our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show, wishing you a very good Saturday evening. Scoop, we're going to hear from both head coach uh, Tim Nicely, and then our player profile tonight is senior Kirsten Mannon, just an incredibly well-spoken lady, but uh, really a good blueprint for those that maybe aren't blessed with immediate talent, but are self-made. Tremendous work ethic can get you into not only a varsity starting spot, but a key contributor amongst others. I highly advise you stick around because she is a tremendous interview. As we look forward to tonight's opponent, as expected, the opposition becomes a little bit more difficult with each passing round. Your, expect, your expectations, I should say, for this evening's contest. Well, this is going to be a hard-fought game. These teams know each other so well. And Edgerton's been a team that's played very well on the road this season. They have six wins against five losses on the road, but they'll have their hands full and then some. The Pilots, a perfect 9-0 at the hangar, looking for their 10th <laughs> win to close out the home portion of their season. We're going to break it down every which way from Sunday, but first we're going to take a quick timeout when we come back. Our pregame interviews, we will start with head coach Tim Nicely. We'll break down that big win against the Aces about 72 hours ago, as well as preview tonight's opponent in the Bulldogs. Then our player profile, senior Kirsten Manning. She's headed to Bowling Green. We'll let her do the talking for her. Just a tremendous interview. Don't you go anywhere. We're back with more of the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show right after this. You're watching DCTV Sports. Welcome back. The Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show continues as we welcome you back to DC TV Sports. Round one is in the books, and in all honesty, the expectations were met. Ayersville dispatched Hicksville in control of the game pretty much from the opening tip-off with a big win, 58-19, a running clock late in the second half. Now, as you would expect, the cream starts to separate from the rest of the crop. Edgerton is now next up on the docket, and Ayersville gets to host again. The hangar will be the location, being joined by Coach Nicely right now. Coach, let's review before we preview, breaking it down. Again, you tip your cap to Hicksville, but they really were outmanned, outgunned, yeah. Yeah. and to your team's credit, they didn't take it lightly. Sometimes you see teams come in, they get a little sloppy, maybe they play a little bit of street ball. Mm -hmm. That was not the case with your team. Very efficient, very workmanlike. Yeah, I thought uh, coming out, we knew uh, you know we beat them by 30 the last time. And we had to come out strong, which I thought we did. We uh, stuck with 1-3-1. Uh, one, one. Uh, we worked a little bit of that at the beginning of the year. Uh, we haven't did it for a long time, but we wanted to try something different. Kids did a great job with that. Um, but give Hicksville credit. They, they played hard. They gave everything they had. But, uh, yeah, we just, uh, we just have a lot of talent and a lot of uh, kids' athleticism, and uh, we just sort of took the game over. Took the game over, especially in that first quarter, forcing eight turnovers. You had them in double digits by halftime. Kendra Waldron in the open court is just a Philly running in open green space. Mm -hmm. Defense and offense, so that's what this team has done all season long. Yeah, and that's what uh, we want to keep doing with this 1-3-1. One, one. We experimented with uh, you know Taylor in the middle and 
Kendra out front and Allie underneath, and then we get rebounds and just throw it along, and then she'll score the layup. But, uh, you know, Kirsten played a great game inside. She got a lot of loose balls, easy baskets. And, uh, you know, our whole team has been playing like that all year, and uh, especially here lately, I thought uh, everybody's been really coming together. And we, we pass the ball. We don't care who scores. They, they just look for each other and the best shot we can get. Kirsten has been exceptional, but really saving her best, it seems like, for the late or tail end of the season. Mm -hmm. Double-digit scoring in just about every game, I think, that we've covered in the last month or so. But it's not like she does it flashy. She has great court sense. A lot of players would stand around if a teammate draws double coverage, and Mm -hmm. they'll wave their arms saying, I'm open and open. She moves to get open. Mm -hmm. She makes it easier. It's it's almost like cutting your meat for you at dinner, but that shows great basketball court sense, doesn't it? Yeah, she... uh She's been really playing very well here the last, uh, like, seven, eight games, you know, of the season. Uh, she's getting a lot of loose balls. She's uh, attacking the basket. She's flashing in the middle, getting the open pass, and then scoring. So it's just uh, overall just a great performance for her, and, and uh, we'll keep rolling as a team and uh, keep things going. Speaking of great performances, Ali Schindler, 10 in the first half, 10 in the second, and that was sitting most of the fourth quarter as you subbed, and I mean subbed, deep yeah. to your bench. But – Allie Schindler just doing Allie Schindler type things. Yeah, and Allie got a lot of easy shots in the paint. And uh, that she shoots over 60% from inside the paint. So we keep telling her, if you got this ball in the paint, shoot it. <laughs> we got to have that. That's very high percentage for her and just helps our whole team out. Let's go ahead and turn to next up, Edgerton. Break them down for us. Um, the Farnham girls, a uh, nice player. She, uh, she had 26 against us the last time. Um, we got a couple things up our sleeve to uh, help offset that for next game. So uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday. And I, our girls are up for the challenge. And, and uh, they, they want to cut the other net down and, uh, and uh, get a sectional championship. So. Now, I know we've talked about this before during the regular season. And you are a firm believer of the most important game on the schedule is the next game yes. on the schedule. Yep. Sometimes it's difficult, especially when you reach the postseason like this. The players know. Yeah. They understand that a loss means you put the jerseys away for another season. Yeah. And in this case, this team will never take the court again. Yeah. They want to keep playing as long as possible, but they seem to, to not be overwhelmed by it. Is that a fair way to put it? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, they understand. Uh, they, you know, The game in front of them is a game we have to win. And uh, looking down the, down the way, I mean, you should be playing better teams as you go on in tournament. And uh, I think uh, we're, we're uh, peaking at the right time as a team. And I think uh, we're going to stay that way the rest of the season. And, uh, and uh, we'll see. Everybody's going to bring their best game to us, and that's what we want. And, and uh, we have the talent to, uh, to overcome about everything. So. so here's to peaking at least for one more game. Best yes. of luck to you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is Coach Nicely. You are listening to the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. We're going to take a quick time out. We're back with our player profile. She's been waiting in the wings. She wanted Coach to go first. But we will get to hear from Kirsten Mannon when we come back. You're watching DCTV Sports. Welcome back. The Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show continues as we are still a few minutes away from tip-off. They earned the right to wear the jersey another round as Ayersville dispatched to Hicksville and it really wasn't even close final score 58 to 19 now the opponents get a little bit more difficult it would be expected as you advance farther farther into the playoffs as Edgerton lays in wait our player profile we've called her name enough over the past few weeks time to actually give her a microphone Kirsten Mannon joining us senior and I think they list you at 58 is yes. that correct yep. is the roster accurate mm-hmm. It is. Pretty much. Okay, because Allie Schindler said uh, they were fudging by a couple of it's inches. It's pretty close. <laughs> Had a fantastic first half uh, against Hicksville on Wednesday night, 11 points. Played some strong defense. But then, as you would have expected, too, it was probably the last chance for a lot of the reserves deep on Correct. the bench to actually get time on the court. Mm-hmm. The starters, I watched you, no matter who came in, you guys were the biggest cheerleaders Mm -hmm. for those subs. This team really is a family, isn't it? Yes, it is. We all love to see everybody get out there and watch how they play together because that's going to be the future teams. And Mm -hmm. we always talk about coming back and coming to the next games just to cheer them on, and hopefully they can do good things next year. So let's start with last year into this year. What were you working on to improve? What did Coach challenge you in the offseason to do? Um, definitely work on my shot and just getting my form down and being able to go where I need to be. Like you said earlier, 
I don't really stand there and just jump around. I go to the ball and try and create things, and then being able to work with everyone else just to know where everyone's going to be. This is a senior-dominated team. With the exception of Kendra, it is four seniors. How long did it take you guys to develop this chemistry? Well, most of us, me, Allie, Taylor, and Mabel, have all been playing since eighth grade together, so we... Uh, we all kind of know how each other plays, and there's a lot of times I'll see somebody, and we know that the pass is going to be there. And bringing Kendra in, it was super easy. We all were all able to flow really well together. There's an old phrase, the days are long, but the seasons are short. Does it seem like just yesterday that you were starting this season yes. back in November? Yes. What's we the talk been amongst this group. You have big expectations. Allie was our player profile on Wednesday. She said unfinished business. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. In the end, we'd like to make it as far as we could and get to state. I think that would just be phenomenal for all of us. Knowing how well we work as a team, I really think we can get there. And not only the people who start, but it's also our bench too, because you can see we have cheerleaders and everyone loves everyone on the court. We love our team and we are not afraid to get where we need to go. So, not to call you a one-trick pony, but you only play basketball. Correct. What went into that decision to be a specialist? Well, and I did do volleyball, but I ended up, I tore my ACL my freshman year of basketball, and then it kind of put me back in volleyball, and I just decided just to focus on basketball because it is my favorite sport, and I thought that this year I would really work super hard in the off season and get to be the best I could. And you are seeing that pay off. Yes. Now, we're not going to graduate you too soon, but... As a senior, another couple months, you're going to be styling in the cap and gown, <laughs> strutting across the stage. What next? Uh, my plans are to go to BGSU, and I want to major in their tourism, hospitality, and event management. And I want to have my own area to host weddings and be a wedding planner. My goodness. Now, what got you interested in that? Well, it, it took a long time to get there. I had a lot of different ideas, but then I really real, realized that I enjoy planning and that Having parties and being able to have my own area would just be awesome. And there's, there's some money involved, too. <laughs> <laughs> and she smiles ear to ear when she says that. Maybe you can make a donation to the school here, have your name on a building Maybe. or a new gym. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to rewind a little bit, not to get sentimental, because I know when you're a senior, sometimes that can overwhelm you. This is the last time I do and then fill in the blank. But it is so fun to watch the way the hype video plays <laughs> and when the lights come down here yes. and all those grade schoolers line up in the tunnel and you see their eyes light up when the starters high five of them throw them a t-shirt you were that little girl mm -hmm. once now that you are here what do you want your legacy to be how do you want people to remember you i want people to remember me that not only i didn't start on varsity as a freshman, I had to work my way up. And I want people to see that it was there was hard work that went into that. It wasn't just me assuming, oh, I'm going to be on varsity. And I really want people to notice that there's hard work that you can put into it and not just assume that they're going to be right up there. I want people to realize how much work I actually put into this program. Anything worth having is worth working for, right? Correct. Good philosophy. I'll quote you on that if you're okay <laughs> with it. We're not going to graduate you too soon. Next game, the most important one on the schedule against Edgerton. That's going to be this team's laser focus for the next three days, correct? Correct. And then take care of business another time. I hope so. Do you guys openly talk about that? Um, Timmy's got some big plans. He keeps saying, we're going to get there, we're going to get there. And we're saying, Timmy, slow down. We don't want to get too ahead of ourselves now. Wow, normally you'd think it'd be <laughs> the other way around. That's an honest answer, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate it. One of the many reasons we wanted to get you on as a player profile. Congratulations so far. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Kirsten Mann in our player profile. Don't you go anywhere. We're back with more. You're watching the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show on DCTV Sports. Get a good look at the hangar and in particular the backside of Kendra Waldron as the pilots are warming up. We are still about just under six minutes away 
from tipping off second round playoff action. The sectionals featuring 22 and 1 Ayersville against 10 and 12 Edgerton. Brent Balbinot alongside Scoop Miller. It's the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac show continues with our Baker Schindler Company starting lineups. Let's give them first for the visitors, the Bulldogs, as we mentioned, 10 and 12 overall, finishing 2 and 5 in the GM side this season. At the point, it will be Ava Swank. Swank stands in at 5'8". She is a sophomore. Swank, again, doesn't average a ton of points, but a situation where she kind of has to bring the ball up the court and keep the offense running. At the off guard, it will be Cassie Everett. Everett's a 5'7 junior. Everett's averaging five points and two and a half rebounds per contest. At the swing, Ava Geisigi. Ava Geisigi, a 5'8 sophomore. If you haven't noticed, Scoop, underclassman is the theme for the starting five here. Again, Isigi standing in, as we mentioned, 5'6. She averages just under four points and four rebounds per contest. Your front court as follows, and this is where the damage gets done. Olivia Farnham, again, just a sophomore at six foot. She is the alpha on this roster, according to head coach Marchetta Carrier, and you can see why. 16 points, seven boards, nearly three assists, and two and a half steals per contest. She is getting some look already from several Division II schools, both in the GLIAC and the GMAC. And then in the middle, it will be Gretchen Kepler. Kepler, a six-foot junior. Kepler, again, averaging three and a half points and three and a half rebounds per contest. Those are your starters for Edgerton. For the Pilots of Ayersville, again, 22 and one overall, seven and zero this year's GMC champion. It is the usual suspects. Mabel McGuire, the 5'6 senior at the point. McGuire, again, averages four points per contest. She does a little bit of everything, though, Scoop. She also averages about two to three steals, two to three assists, two to three rebounds. She is, what's a good way to put it, feisty. <laughs> At the off guard, it will be Kirsten Mannon, our player profile. Mannon, a 5'8 senior. She is going to Bowling Green. She's not going to be playing basketball, although talk with her about possibly being a manager. Stay around the game, maybe get a little bit of scholarship money and certainly run the practice squad. Manon averages seven and a half points, 3.1 rebounds per contest. At the swing, it is the only underclassman on the roster, and she is a filly in the open field when she goes on a fast break. 5'6", sophomore Kendra Waldron. Waldron averaging just under eight points, two and a half boards, two assists, and one and a half steals per contest. Then your front court, the damage gets done by Allie Schindler. Schindler, again, the senior. And she is going to Kent State, looking to walk on the track team. Schindler, 5'10", again averages 13.5 points, 5.5 boards, 3 assists, 3.3 steals per contest. Scoop across the board, that's about as solid as you can possibly get. Well, there's a reason they are uh, got 22 wins on the season. They're just are solid from head to toe. They also got the luxury of going to the bench a little bit as well. And wow, this magical season. The Pots hope to continue into next week's district, standing away this Edgerton Bulldog team that's starting to find their stride. Rounding out the starting five in the middle, the 6'1 senior shot blocker. She is going to Ohio Northern to play volleyball, but right now they're going to keep her in a basketball uniform as long as possible. Taylor Kraft, six and a half points, 12 boards, and just a shade under five blocks per contest. And Scoop, she is the X factor that opposing teams can't prepare for in practice. They can't simulate it, much less when they get into a ball game. Well, you can't. You, you mentioned those five blocks a game, which is just off the charts. But how many times does she change or alter a yes. shot inside? Probably double that. So it's a reason the Pilots come in holding teams under 30 points a game on the season. Those are your starting lineups brought to you by Baker Schindler Company. We've got one minute before we tip this thing off. We're going to take one final break. The Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show continues right after this. You're watching DC TV Sports.
Final 20 seconds ticking off the warm-up clock. The balls are in the racks. They've been put away in the tunnel. The warm-ups have been shed. Fans starting to rise to their feet as we are getting set for the playing of the National Anthem. It will be brought to you by the Defiance Elks Lodge 147. As there you get a good look at the pilots in their home whites with those baby blue lettering and numerals with the black trim. On the flip side, the Bulldogs in their traveling burgundy uniforms. And you see the student section, including several of the men's boys basketball players right behind the girls huddle there as they have brought out the bleachers in the auxiliary gym and there's the maroon uniforms of the visiting bulldogs with the gold lettering and numerals the national anthem brought to you by the defiance elks lodge 147. National Anthem in the books. Our thanks going out to the Defiance Health Lodge 147 for helping us bring it to you. Starting lineups, we gave them to you courtesy of Baker Schindler Company. They're going to be brought to you here via the PA announcer. And of course, the obligatory Ohio High School Athletic Association Sportsmanship Reader announcement before every ball game. We can tell you the officiating crew this evening is a good one, well experienced. Dylan Woods, Eddie Norrells, and Austin Cape. There you take a look at them from behind. But uh, Scoop, as a former coach, you didn't have any complaints about any of these three gentlemen. That's saying something. It's not just the cream of the crop starting to separate as far as the teams are, but also when the officials enter the gym. They've earned the right to be playing or working, I guess I should say, deeper into the season. Yeah, they really have. And two of these three guys will be refereeing in the state tournament uh, just down the road here in a few weeks. So certainly uh, kind of the best of the best. I think as a coach, you walk in, you see these three guys, your mind's at ease. You know they're going to work the game. They're going to call it as they see it. That's all you can ask. They're very consistent, some of the best. Well, take a look at Edgerton. Again, 10 and 12 overall, and an opponent that Ayersville is not unfamiliar with. Out of the GMC, they finished two and five and in seventh place. They entered tonight's contest on a two-game win streak to finish up the regular season. They knocked off Gorham Fayette, 63-41, back on February 13th. And then two days later, topped Hicksville, 61-26 in the regular season meeting versus Ayersville. They hosted the Pilots not that long ago, back on February 8th. Ayersville won 52-38, but the leading scorer in that game was actually Olivia Farnham, 26 points. And she did it by posting up, she did it by coming out and facing, and even stepping beyond the arc. Coach Nicely said, we've got a few things to try and neutralize her the second time around. Well, she's the real deal. You know, I watched her last year as a freshman where she was named first team all GMC, and her game has improved. And again, this is a team, you mentioned it, two consecutive wins. They've also won six of their last nine. One of those wins on the road at Fairview, a team that took Ayersville right here at the hangar down to the final moments for the GMC title. So certainly Ayersville won't look past Edgerton. You mentioned these teams know each other well. And the last time Edgerton played here at the hangar was last season, a game the Pilots pulled out 53-50. to 50. So certainly they have to feel confident they can come on the road and get it done here against Ayersville. I don't think many teams that have played here can say that this season. No. 
at the same time, there's no substitute for home cooking. And this place is bound to be hopping. We still have a few people straggling in. They are about to, I'm assuming, are they going to dim the lights and do the normal hype intro with the spots? Possibly not. I don't think you can do that with, with the a state. tournament game. Okay. So They'll It's still going to be a hostile atmosphere uh, for the Bulldogs to venture into tonight. We already mentioned how Ayersville, a perfect 9-0 here at the hangar, trying to make it 10 straight here. One stat that jumped out at me, Scoop, as I was scouring both teams overall, and that is the assist to turnover ratio. Now, we know Ayersville's defense is solid. As a matter of fact, they score anywhere from 25 to as much as half of their points in any given game off of their defense. But for Edgerton, 9.3 assists per game, 18 and a half turnovers per game. And they have been notorious for slow starts. As a matter of fact, in the first quarter alone, their turnover percentage is almost 32%, almost one out of every three possessions. You cannot afford that tonight against a stingy Ayersville defense. Well, you can't. You don't have that type of margin of error when you're playing uh, against Ayersville. But on the flip side, I think it's going to be awfully important. Ayersville comes out. They need to set the tone with their defense. They really need to win this game at the defensive end. And certainly that's an area I think Coach Nicely thinks they might be able to exploit the Bulldogs in here tonight. A situation as the Ayersville starters now being introduced. Bell McGuire high-fiving our player profile tonight. Kirsten Manning, Kendra Waldron. The torch is going to be passed to this young lady, number four, amongst others, but she'll be the lone returning starter next year as a junior. Ali Schindler and Taylor Kraft rounding out the starting five for Ayersville. The winner tonight advances. They'll play at the Dog Pound next Thursday, and it will be against the winner of Montpelier and Antwerp. Right now, don't care who it is, just take care of business on your home court. Kraft in the center circle for Ayersville. It will be Farnham for Edgerton. Battle for the tip. McGuire secures it. And Ayersville will start off on offense. Edgerton comes out in a 3-2 zone defense. Uh, no surprise, I'm sure, to either team. Now to bust it. Because Ayersville is not a particularly good three-point shooting team. They're going to try and go down low to Kraft. And there's the first turnover of the ball game on their very first possession. Swatting at the ball, almost a turnover. A lot of movement. Stop and pop and drops for Olivia Farnham. Well, did we mention she's a real deal? You know, that yes. time I thought Ayersville defended Farnham as well as they could, and she just went up and made a play. Well, but and at six foot, she's a little taller than most posts. You can say at the high school level, yeah, we're going to put you in at the post and you're 5'9". Not the case with her as a loose pass. Jump ball the call, and it goes to Edgerton. Well, credit Edgerton. They're coming out here on a box and one on Ali Schindler. In that time, a uh, little bit of confusion, I thought, on the uh, offensive side of things for the Pilots. You're and technically going to call that a turnover? I'm going to call that a turnover. Okay, all right. So two possessions, two turnovers for Harrisville. Long three at the other end comes off the heel of the iron from Swank. Kraft, that ball go off her knee, it did. Taylor, I think, clearly thought it was going out of bounds off of Edgerton. She didn't hustle for that. And the look of surprise on her face bears out the fact that she thought it was going to be Pilots basketball. Yeah, it's going to end up being a team rebound for the Bulldogs, so they'll get an extra opportunity. But right now, Edgerton looking awfully confident, uh, taking a couple tough shots early. Overplaying man and knocks it out of bounds. Last touched. And right now, Olivia Farnham after draining that first shot, and it was a beauty. My guess is she's going to have to get used to a white jersey in her grill the rest of the night. Well, I would think Ayers will probably try to keep fresh legs on her most of the night, make her work extra hard to get the basketball, so once she does, she might be a little less effective. Well, she drives, and I think Kraft maybe caught a piece of that. McGuire with the rebound, but four maroon jerseys back. That's great transition defense. 
what really was something they're going to have to continue to do against this Airsville team that loves to get out and transition. Now, if there is a potential, oh, what a, oh my goodness, Waldron was wide open and missed the bunny. The second was no good, and I think Kendra just got a little ahead of herself, and I see the look on her face. She is not happy. Long three at the other end, barely catches iron. Waldron with the rebound. Well, that was such a good look. Great movement without the ball. You don't see that very often. Schindler amongst the trees, kicks it right back out. Manon, here's the one that you think might be able to bust that zone, but she leaves it just a little bit short. Scoop, I was about to say, who has the green light from beyond the arc here? You take a look at who's got the shooting percentage from three. Nobody has a tremendous three-point shooting percentage, but Manon probably the best. Actually, she does have the best at 25%. Yeah, she's the highest on the team, no question. But remember, just 13% as a team beyond yeah. the arc for Ayersville, so they love to get touches in the paint. Another long three, almost one and done. Kraft spinning like a dervish in a whirling wind, but she can't come down with the board. They'll kick it back out up top. Good movement right now by Edgerton, but the left-hander no good. Out of bounds, and they'll say off of Edgerton, it looks like Gisagi. Well, not a bad take by the sophomore Ava Swank that time. Try to get the fingertip roll with the left hand to go. It catches off the iron. Ayersville comes up with the team rebound. Looking for their first points of the night. We're nearly three minutes in. Skip pass, McGuire. Now she will drive, and wow, it's a tough open to this ball game for Kendra Waldron. And I think she might be coming out as Laney Sheets will check in. Yeah, right now the pilot's a little out of character. You know, maybe a little bit too amped up, trying to do too yep. much. But the third pilot turnover in the opening three minutes. Well, Kendra Waldron is too hard on herself sometimes, too. I know she's unhappy with it, but you do have to flush it. We're not even halfway through the first quarter. As this one halfway down rips out. Speaking of ripping it, Kraft outlets McGuire from the elbow. Almost banked it in. And again, one and done. A yeah, great job by Farnham on the defensive glass. They're doing an excellent job in transition defense. You know, that time Ayersville looked to push. Ayers or, uh, Edgerton had a good answer and tremendous job on the glass. Kepler trying to back it down up top and from the elbow. That's just great ball movement as Everett's now in the books. Oh, great job by Casey Everett. You know, when Farnham gets the ball down low, she's going to draw a crowd, and Everett's made a nice rim run. Farnham, a very good assist person, comes up with a good one there. Kraft going hard to the iron, and she's fouled by Farnham, her first. I think Taylor Kraft is going to have to be more aggressive in the post tonight, Scoop. Normally yeah. she's content to kind of kick it back out, let them work it around, but tonight I think she's got to go to work. I really believe that as well, and I think she's going to have to do it at both ends, you know, especially with the sophomore Farnham in there who's going to try to get to a lot of touches and can hurt you in so many ways. Kraft, a 51% free throw shooter, a little long on her first. Second, she doesn't have a lot of arch, and it's around the world and kicks out. So halfway through the first quarter, and Ayersville still looking for their first points of any kind. Oh, this is a heat check from way downtown, a Premier Bank three for Olivia Farnham. Wow, that was beyond NBA range there. But again, look at the confidence. She was catching, shooting rhythm, no hesitation whatsoever. And Farnham now with five big points here as Edgerton starts out on a 7-0 run. Sheets will try and break it onto the scoreboard, misses. And Johnny on the spot, Manon with the putback. Well, that's huge uh, to get your offense jump started by getting an offensive rebound and second chance points, just the boost that Ayersville needs. Well, that was a nice screen, stop and pop jumper, and now Ava Swank is in the books. Swank, again, averaging seven and a half points per contest, but right now, third different Edgerton player to score. Kraft in the high blocks, puts it on the floor, goes up strong with the left hand. Well, right there's what you're referring to, Brent, the fact she has to really be that aggressor down low in that time. Great job getting the ball at the high post, attacking the rack. Big answer at the other end. Everett's really being dogged by McGuire, almost a turnover. Edgerton with good ball movement, though, in the early part of this ball game. Here's another heat check, and that barely caught iron. Kraft with another board. What's what she have now, Scoop? Is she at four? 
I've got it for four, and that time it looked like uh, man and Mike got a piece of that shot. The yep. reason it was a little short. Craft on the drive. They're trying to get Schindler involved. The leading score at nearly 14 points per game has yet to take a shot. McGuire back into the high post. Craft goes to work again. Misses, follows. Sheets from the elbow and can't get the roll. Craft again. Three times and it wasn't a charm. Now they got to hustle and get back and an open court foul against Bell McGuire. McCredit Ava swanked that time. The Bulldogs immediately attacked that pilot uh, defensive transition game. I think that's smart because Ayersville does such a great job going the offensive glass. In fact, they have four offensive rebounds and we're not even six minutes in. So I think one way you counter that is by looking to get out in transition. And that time, uh, Ayersville, a little tardy getting back. That will be the first team foul of the night for the Pilots. McGuire and Manning will catch a breather. Waldron checks back in along with Ariel Brown. And right now, they are just moving the ball to perfection as Clara Gersh Gershitz, Gershitz, there we go. I had it written down phonetically, so my apologies to the Gershitz family. Nice pump fake, nice drive, all ball. Kraft is there. She's fouled on the way up. I know Mandarin got a, pardon me, Waldron got a facial there, but Scoop, you like that move. That's where she's at her best. You tell her to continue to drive. You're you? exactly right. We're starting to see the Ayersville team we've been used to watching all season long, and that is being the aggressor. You know, they're trying to go downhill. They're trying to attack the rack. And that time, even though the first one they got a piece of, they stayed the course, were able to get the offensive rebound. And there they connect on the first of two from the charity stripe. Second is on the way. Halfway down, it kicks out. She's one for four as Kennedy Stoop has checked into the ball game for Edgerton. On the drive, great elevation, but it missed everything. Stoop tried to save it. They're playing volleyball with it in the paint. And here comes Schindler. But again, five maroon jerseys back. Their transition D has been excellent. Waldron puts up a three. It's a little short. Kraft comes flying in. This one's a little short. Battling for the basketball. Kraft's got it. From the elbow, Sheets maybe rushed that shot just a bit much. It's out of bounds. It stays with Ayersville. All right the now, three offensive uh, rebounds on this possession alone by the Pilots, who now have eight here. And we've not even gone seven minutes. They have to cash in now with some second chance points. Far corner sheets. The lefty on the drive, but cut off baseline, throws it away. Another turnover. This time ripped down by Swank. Under a minute left to go in the quarter. Up by six. We'll see how they play it. They're going to continue to attack. She goes right down the middle of the paint and finishes with the teardrop. Again, I really like her style play. You know, for a sophomore, she's so aggressive. She goes downhill. She leads the team in assists, deflections, steals, charges taken. Just the aggressor out there. What a heady play. And that one thrown away. Waldron was trying to get it down low and falling down. Schindler picks up a foul. Edgerton firing on all cylinders here in the first quarter. Yeah, I think your head coach, Marchetta Carey, you, you can't be any more pleased and what you've seen here in the opening seven and a half minutes where they're playing with so much confidence, they're playing aggressive, they're taking care of the basketball. I do not have the Bulldogs for a turnover wow. here. And remember, they're coming in averaging nearly 19 yeah. per contest. Boy, they are firing all cylinders. Bell McGuire, I think that might be out of bounds off of, it is, Farnham. And there's where Bell McGuire pays dividends that don't necessarily show up in the stat book. Well, we talked about this is where Ayersville needs to win the game on the defensive side of things, and that time the ball pressure forces Edgerton into their first turnover of the night. Seven seconds. Are they going to move? McGuire almost banks in a three. One second left, and this will be short. The first eight minutes in the books, but Edgerton has come out and punched GMC regular season champion and number two seed Ayersville right in the mouth. We'll see how the pilots respond. 13-5. We are at the end of the first quarter. We'll take this first insurance timeout. We're back with more on DC TV Sports.
We are back at the hangar. There you take a look at the huddle. As the second seed in this bracket, Ayersville Pilots find themselves on the short end of a 13-5 score. Brent Balbanon alongside Scoop Miller. Let's do a quick look at your Mark Motes Ford stat summary. I'll start with points and leading the charge, Olivia Farnham. She drained one from way beyond the arc. She got the first basket of the game. She's got five. Ava Swank, who averages seven and a half a game, has four. Then a deuce apiece for Casey Everett and Clara Garrish shits off the bench. On the flip side, just two in the scoring column for the Pilots. Leading the charge, Taylor Kraft, one for four from the free throw line as there's a block and a turnover, and two from Kirsten Mannon. What do you have for turnovers, Scoop? Well, the first quarter, Ayersville turned it over five times. It led to four Edgerton points. On the flip side, Edgerton with just one turnover. So, Bulldogs, tremendous job there securing the basketball. Farnham with a good long-range release, but it's short. Schindler, quick outlet, two steps. Oh! Talk about smooth transition, Mabel McGuire. Well, that's the first time the Pilots have beaten the Bulldogs down the floor to get an easy deuce in transition. So, again, great job executing the fast break and a great finish. Long three, barely catches iron. Schindler ripping it down, and it's out of bounds off of Farnham. Ayersville may have drawn a break there. Pilots got a big time break right there. Farnham did all she could to try to tie up the basketball, and Ayersville was able to rip it out. And they'll uh, dodge a bullet there, chance to cut away at this six point deficit. High blocks, Kraft didn't have her hands up, almost lost it. Skip pass, that's a dangerous pass. It's deflected and out of bounds. Last touch by Swank. Well, that was a great read by Swank. We just mentioned how she leads the team in deflections and steals. And that time, anticipated that cross-court pass. Just couldn't, couldn't quite get enough of the hand on there to keep it in bounds. But good pressure defense once again by the Bulldogs. Waldron will bring it across the timeline, keeping her dribble. They're going to lay off of McGuire. She's not a threat from beyond the arc. She can drive. Crapped in the high blocks, back out. Edgerton stays in that box and one defense on Ali Schindler. And around the world, it kicks out. Man, it had a good look, but it's one and done. Swank crosses over. Schindler picking her up as she crosses the timeline. Farnham averages 16 a ball game. She had 24 in the first meeting, despite it being a loss. McGuire coming out, reaching, almost got the steal. On the drive, wow, lots of contact. Open three, it's short. Kraft continuing to battle for it. The outlet to McGuire. They've got numbers and a rare fast break opportunity. Wow, are they letting them play? Holy cow. Ayersville's got to hustle back. And McGuire, that's a frustration foul. And we'll see with two fouls, but I think Belle McGuire might be subbed for here. She is not happy. Yeah, that's one of those fouls you want to avoid right there. You know, looked like a, a no call, a lot of contact the other end, but you have to flush that, make the next play. And that time, maybe frustration took over and made that an easy call for veteran official Eddie Norrells there to call that reach in foul. On the drive, the dish. Almost dragging her pivot foot that was close. Kennedy Stoop back out up top. Right now Brown is on Farnham. They go down low. Good help defense by Ayersville. Farnham on the drive, crosses over. A little too hard, but she gets her own board. All this action, three minutes into the second quarter, and we only have one basket between both teams. In the high blocks, Stute, oh, great dish down low, great movement without the ball by Garrishutes. And give uh, Stute a lot of credit there. She did a great job playing strong with the basketball, drew a crowd, made a nice bounce pass inside. Nice pass going up Mannon. Oh, crashing the glass again, but Kraft can't get the range. Second time, third time, finally a whistle. No blood, no foul. Who's this going against? <laughs> wow. Ava Swank with her first. And right now, a well-needed timeout really for both teams. But Ayersville's Taylor Kraft will head to the line when we return 
right after this first insurance timeout. 437 left to go first quarter. Pilots trailing the Bulldogs 15-7. You're watching DC TV Sports. There you take a look at the Edgerton huddle. All business right now as they are up by eight. Not quite halfway through the second quarter. Edgerton 10 and 12 on the season. Finished seventh in the GMC this year at two and five. The Pilots won it at seven and zero oh and 22 and one. But what have we talked about, Scoop? It's a one game season. All it takes is one good performance as Taylor Kraft long on her fifth free throw. She's now one for five tonight. Yeah, if you're still playing right now, you're undefeated in the postseason. That's yep. really all that matters. So you want to try to get things going at the right time. And to this juncture, certainly Edgerton has done that. They have really played strong with the basketball. They've knocked down some shots. Speaking of knocking down shots, that one not quite on the money by Kepler. Here comes Schindler. Finds Brown about 25 feet out. Kraft will launch a 16-footer. Oh, my! Deadened on the heel of the iron. We'll call that shooter's touch. Yeah, that one's going to hurt Edgerton a little bit because that's one I think they're happy to exchange. We're going to give Kraft a 15-footer, keep her off the glass, and that one somehow just was uh, hit, the, hit the heel there and stopped. You talk about shooter's touch. She had it. Elevating, and again, it's short. Can they get the long board? It'll go to Garishitz. Good reversal, and Manon with the steal. One-handed outlet. Here comes Brown, crosses over. Can't get the roll. Would she have been better served to just go straight down the middle there? I think she was. It looked like uh, Farm did not want to pick up a foul. She backed off, but uh, she expected contact. Wow, hitting the deck. They are letting them play tonight. Another loose pass. And right now, Ayersville looks like they might be a step or two slow. They look like they have spent a ton of energy. Yeah, that ball was uh, on the floor there a long time, and no pilot was able to come down with oh. it. There's a block by Schindler, rebounded by Kraft. Man. That gets the crowd a little life here. We'll see if it can carry over at the offensive end. Manning, skip pass, nice baseline cut. That ball is blocked and a late whistle, as this foul is going to go against Kepler, her first. Yeah, at that time it looked like Gretchen Kepler felt she had a lot of basketball. Not happy with the call. That'll result in two free throws here for the Pilots. Laney Sheets, a 57% free throw shooter. Lefty releases, rattles Homer first. Right. Substitution for Edgerton as checking back into the ballgame, Casey Everett's. Yeah, right now you can see Edgerton a little bit winded. I think that's why uh, Coach Carrier of the Bulldogs called that initial timeout just to give her girls a little breather. Sheets one of two, so they stay within four. It's a 6-2. It's not technically a run, but Ayersville has outscored Edgerton 6-2 here in the second quarter. Just one basket. Well, the defense has picked up. They're challenging every yep. shot. They've made it very difficult for Farnham to get open looks. That shot might have been a little rushed, and Manon crashes the glass. But again, five maroon jerseys hustling back. Schindler looking for her first points of the night. Nice drive, lost it off of her knee. And once again, credit Edgerton. They're doing an excellent job in transition deep defense, not trying to give up the easy ones. And Coach Tim Nice is going to burn a 30-second timeout. We will keep it here with 2.32 left to go in the quarter. It was 13 to five at the end of the first eight minutes. It's now 15-11, but a situation here where can you catch your second wind in the final two and a half minutes and continue to make this run? Only one basket, two total points for Edgerton so far in nearly six minutes of play. If you're Ayersville, you've got to feel the wind is in your sails but right now, it almost doesn't seem like it. Well, you're right. And I think this is a very important uh, juncture coming up right here in the last two and a half minutes of the opening half. I understand it's still the first half, but 
You're at your 10. You've done so many things well. You want to go into the locker room with some type of uh, a lead. And then, meanwhile, Ayersville, things have not gone their way. And if they can put a little spurt together here, boy, that's going to be a huge shot in the arm going into the locker room. Well, the defense continues to man up, and it is physical off the screen. Body still flying at the top of the key and almost a loose ball turnover. Barnum secures it, knocked out of bounds. I don't know if one of our cameramen can get a close-up of either Ali Schindler, Kirsten Mannon, or Taylor Kraft, but Scoop, they are all flush, red-faced. They have expended so much energy. Well, That's got, a good look there. Oh, there's a nice out-of-bounds wow. entry pass and a great finish. I believe that was uh, Ava Giesegi. The sophomore made a nice rim run there in the backside. Oh, my, is that going to be a foul cutting through the screen by number five, Clara Garishitz, her first. Well, that's a foul you're going to live with if you're Coach Marchetta Carey, the fact that you're locked in defensively, you're trying to contest the ball. But take a look here. These ladies are gassed they out are. there. They're working awfully hard at both ends here tonight. They are beat red. It tells you how much energy they have spent. And Bell McGuire with two fouls about to check back in for Ayersville. Waldron drives but dishes. She's open for three. Does she have it in her? Yes! Kendra wow. Waldron with a premier bank three. Well, that's huge. She comes in shooting just 13% beyond the arc, but that was string music, nothing but net. And that gets the crowd uh, into it here at the hangar. Long three, heat check off the mark. Waldron with the rebound. Look out. She loves to run. Dangerous cross-court pass. It wasn't there. Now they got to get back. Under 90 seconds left to go in the half. Well, there's that transition defense once again by Edgerton. Boy, they're not going to wait. A long three off the mark. Offensive board. Block party being thrown by Taylor Kraft, and it's out of bounds off of Kepler. She just is a weapon that most teams don't have. Yeah, Gretchen Kepler's not used to seeing that. You know, when they get the ball down there to hurt the low post, that's usually going to be two points in the bank. But with Taylor Kraft, she timed that perfectly and then ends up going off Kepler. So right now, Ayersville could tie the three, cut the one the deuce. Nice give and go. They'll go back out up top. Waldron crosses over. Schindler, does she want to make a move? They'll reverse it. That was a little bit of a late pass. Look at Schindler, pushed out of bounds. They're going to call a jump ball. And the arrow points to Edgerton. A great job by Schindler. Looked like Edgerton going to come up with an easy steal. And even though it's Edgerton basketball, that hustle play by Schindler will now give the Pilots an arrow to start the third yep. quarter unless we have a jump ball here in the final 35 seconds. If you're Edgerton, do you take the air out of the ball here? Or do you keep running your offense? I think you run your offense here. You, you want to try to get Oh, she walked. Up. Nope, they're going to say she carried the basketball. Well, there's that pressure defense from Ayersville we really expected to see. You know, that time they did a great job of getting ball pressure. They forced it near the timeline, got a nice double team. Just a third Edgerton turnover of this contest. We'll see if Ayersville works for the final shot. There's still plenty of time. Kraft inside out. McGuire on the drive, and that is off the back side of the iron. Sheet's got a decent look. Five seconds. Are they still going to work their offense? On the drive, Garishets lays it up and in. That is a huge basket just before the buzzer. Boy, it really was. Credit Garrett shoots Great clock management. She knew she had time to get deep to the rack. Tremendous finish in traffic. And the Bulldogs will take a five-point lead into the locker room. 19-14, despite being outscored in the second eight minutes, Edgerton gets a huge basket just before the buzzer to take a five-point lead into their respective locker rooms. We're going to take a quick timeout. We will be back with our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. You're watching DCTV Sports.
Well, we welcome you back to the hangar. It is second round sectional action playoff style as the second seed in this bracket, Ayersville. They enter tonight's contest at 22 and one overall. They won the GMC with a perfect seven and zero record. But what do we always say? Anything can happen in a one game season. And that is the postseason. And that is currently happening right now as GMC rival Edgerton taking a five point lead into the locker room at 19 to 14. The Bulldogs enter tonight's contest at 10 and 12 overall, two and five in the GMC. As a matter of fact, they got beat by double figures in the only meeting of these two teams during the regular season on their home court, 52 to 38. But Scoop, Edgerton came out and almost from the very beginning, it was an Olivia Farnham drive, stop and pop 15 footer. It was a beautiful jump shot and they have never trailed in this ball game. They've done an excellent job. You could tell this team was well prepared coming in. And the fact that they're the underdog, there's really no pressure on them. No one's expecting the Bulldogs to get out of here the W night. They came in, played relaxed, and they played hard. They got that fantastic start. They led 7-0, and uh, they've held uh, at least a lead throughout the entire first half. So great execution by the Bulldogs. and They've earned this five-point halftime advantage. Let's take a look at your Mark Motes board stat summary. I'll start with points. Leading all players, we've got a tie. But let's start with the hosts, the Pilots, and Taylor Kraft, their 6-1 center. She's got six points. She's got two baskets from the floor. She has struggled from the line. She's just two of six tonight. Everybody else, a distant second. Kendra Waldron draining the only three that's been made by the Pilots tonight. Then a deuce apiece for Mabel McGuire and Kirsten Manning. One for two from the free throw line for Laney Sheets off the bench. That is your bench scoring. On the flip side, leading the Bulldogs, Clara Garashutes off the bench. She's got four points in the second quarter. She scored very early in the first. She's got half a dozen. Olivia Farnham, the leading scorer for the Bulldogs at 16 points per game, has five. Four points for starting point guard Ava Swank and a deuce apiece for Casey Everts and Ava Gisagi. The story, though, I think right now more than points or shooting percentage scoop is taking care of the basketball turnovers because Ayersville has an uncommon number of them. Well, you're right. You know, looking at these turnover numbers, you would almost expect them to be flip-flops. Yep. And right now at the break, Edgerton has only turned the basketball over three times. Ayersville has zero points from those turnovers. Then on the flip side, Ayersville has nine first-half turnovers that have led to six Edgerton points. And again, uh, if you'd have told me those were going to be the numbers, I would have said, yeah, Ayersville has three turnovers, Edgerton has nine. But again, that's just a testimony of what Edgerton's been able to do here in this opening half. So, no need to press the panic button, but at the same time, you're in unfamiliar territory right now if you're the Pilots on your home floor, second round of the sectionals, and you're down by five. You'd have to think that you have taken Edgerton's best shot. What's your message to your team in the locker room right now if you coach Tim nicely? Well, you go out and win the second half. You know, the first half behind you did not really play out as you wanted. But you've got a lot of basketball left. You're playing at home. You've got a great crowd here. You just did not have things going your way. Uh, they did, again, credit Edgerton. They held Schindler without a point. That box of one defense really kind of caught Ayersville by surprise, I think. So right now, I think Coach Nicely trying to make some adjustments. How can we get Allie Schindler more involved in the second half? And once we do, you know, the Pilots should be in good shape. On the flip side, if you're Coach Carrier, what are you telling your team in the locker room? We got, Kenny, we got to play hard, you know. The first half is over, so now we go out to start the third quarter. We play like it's a 0 0 game. We want to come out, we want to try to throw the first punch. We know we've got to play 32 minutes. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon, so stay the course. But I really like how. They've done so many things well. And, and give the Edgerton, the two seniors that came off the bench, I thought they played their role yeah. to the, the, the T. You know, they did so many good things. You know, uh, Gershutes there and, of course, uh, Stute. They did the things they needed to do. Great role players. And then, again, getting those six points, I thought, from Gershutes, I thought that was huge, especially that last basket to get the lead back to five points. Right now, that is the difference in the ball game, plus one. 1914. We'll take a quick timeout. Back with more of your Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. You're watching DC TV Sports.
Back at the hangar, we're still about two and a half minutes away from resuming play at the intermission. It is the number two seed, Ayersville, trailing the 10th seed, Hicksville. Pardon me, Edgerton. <laughs> Man, I'm looking back at Wednesday, and we are not going backwards in time. We're going to stay in the here and now. The seventh seed, Edgerton. But just the same, the lower seed is leading the higher right now. We'll wait and see. This is, I want to call it uncharted waters for the Bulldogs. But let's be honest, most teams haven't been in this situation against Ayersville. We'll wait and see. And likewise, if you're Ayersville, too much talent, especially with the way you play defense, the way they handle things in that second quarter, if not for that last second basket before the buzzer, you would have thought Ayersville probably would have gone, despite being down by three instead of five, Ayersville still would have gone into the locker room feeling the wind was in their sails. What a difference one last second basket makes. Well, you're right. And, and you're also right the fact that uh, this is kind of uncharted water for uh, Ayersville. They've only had four games this year decided by ten points or less. I mean, everything else has been pretty much a blowout win. And uh, Edgerton came in here, did a great job. But again, we talked about how Edgerton has six of their ten wins on the road. Edgerton's won sixth or last nine. Edgerton beat Fairview, GMC runner-up yep. Fairview at Fairview. So this is a team that certainly is capable of pulling the upset, but they're going to have to play 32 minutes. They're halfway there, yep. but look for the pots to come out swinging here in the second half. Buzzer sounds with under a minute left to go. Ball's headed back to the rack. We'll see who comes out and lands a punch or two first. Those first two to three minutes in the second half, always so crucial. A reminder for you, the winner of this game advances to the dog pound in defiance next Thursday as they will take on the winner of the Montpelier Antwerp game. And then, of course, next Wednesday, we will be right back here at the hangar because the boys will open up the postseason. Yeah. Same starting five for both teams to begin the second half. Well, this is a fun time of year for everybody. This is why you put in all the time in the summer, the off season, you know, all the work throughout the season. And right now, you know, like we mentioned, everybody starts 0-0 in the tournament undefeated. The goal is to uh, win that last game, as they say. All right, looking at the defense here and Ayersville being patient in their attacking. They go down low to Kraft. Drop step in the paint, nothing doing. Follows her own shot, gets the putback. There's where I think Taylor Kraft could make her money tonight. Well, I like the adjustment, the fact that they really have hounded Ali Schindler all night. I think that's going to create some one-on-one -on -one opportunities down low for Kraft. And again, you're going to have a hard time matching up with the senior. Boy, McGuire with two fouls doesn't care. She's all over Everett's. Crossing over back and forth. Farnham working against Schindler. Dishes off. Kepler slowing it down up top. This is a long three. Trickles off the right side and Kraft with another board. Here comes Waldron. It's one on one. What do you want to do, kid? She'll slow it down. Lob pass into the high blocks. Kraft, two dribbles, goes up strong with the left hand. She'll go back to the line. I love the adjustments right away from Coach Nicely. Again, uh, trying to get an inside presence going. You know, that's where they really have an advantage, I think, on Edgerton with that least little one-two combination and Schindler and Kraft. And now Kraft trying to get her third point in the second half. That one rims out, still a three-point contest. She has such a low line drive. Basically, there's no arc on that free throw. She tries to adjust here. It's long. A good job by the Bulldogs to secure that rebound. Edgerton was out-rebounded 21-14 to that first half. Ayersville had 11 offensive rebounds, but really did not cash in on, on enough of those to uh, make a difference. There's a deflection and another turnover. Waldron will slow it down and get it to Schindler. They'll set up their half-court offense. Again, still this box and one defense. Can Waldron bust it? Goes begging off the front side. McGuire with the board. The putback a little hard. Underneath, tapped around. Kraft can't find it. Look at McGuire dribbling out. A lot of contact. She's upset. Got to keep your head. Long three. No good. Waldron runs into 
Farnham, and I think they're going to call it for the foul. They are. Well, once again, you know, Ayersville comes up with three offensive rebounds, but yet they come up empty. So good job by Farnham getting a rebound on that backside. And I like the timeout here by Coach Marchetta Carrier here to try to counter some of these Ayersville adjustments. I might have accidentally said Waldron. It was Mannon that picked up the foul. 6-13 showing on the third quarter clock. We will take a quick first insurance group timeout. We are back with more. You're watching DC TV Sports. Six oh eight left to go third quarter three point ball game and Kraft swats this one right into Kepler's face that was coming right into your living room we got a camera set up underneath there on that side of the hangar it will remain Edgerton basketball the points are so hard to come by against this Ayersville defense that loves to connect contest shots especially inside deflection loose ball. Ripping through, stripped again. Crap comes away with it. Another turnover. Look at this point center, and now she'll slow it down and get it to Schindler. Schindler still having troubles getting a good look, much less possession of a basketball here in the second half. They have dogged her on this box and one. Waldron deflected, throws it away, gets it right back. McGuire, she'll take a three. Got it! Well, wow. Big time shot by Bell McGuire. You know, that took some uh, courage to take that type of shot. But the second three ball here tonight for the Pilots. Premier Bank three. Up. Shooting just 20% from beyond the arc. We're tied at 19. Here comes Kraft on the break. Leans in. Gets her own board. She'll go to the line again. And right now, you can see Ayersville has turned up the intensity here. They force four Edgerton turnovers here in the first, not even three minutes, after only forcing three turnovers the entire 16 minutes of the first half. And meanwhile, Ayersville already four offensive rebounds here in this third quarter. Boy, that first shot barely cleared the iron, but you don't get style points. She was two for eight. She's now three for nine. First lead of the ball game for the Pilots coming at the 5.05 mark here in the third quarter. And she's got both. Mark it down. That could be the swing. We'll wait and see how Edgerton responds. All right now a 7-0 run here for the Pilots. One and done. Crap with another board. Here comes Manon. One on three. Into the corner. The lefty Sheets releases off the mark. Well, this is the type of game Ayersville needs to get into. Try to get out and transition, more possessions. Mm. They're controlling the glass. Look. One and done again for the Bulldogs. McGuire coming downhill full steam, and we've got a foul. Do you notice how she threw that forearm out as a breaker a little bit? And you can see Edgerton really exhausted out there, trying to keep up with this frantic pace here we've seen from the Pilots to start out this third quarter. And Coach Carey doing all she can to send out fresh troops going to her bench. Up by two, bounce pass to Kraft, back to McGuire. Is she feeling it? No. Whoops. Tracks it down. No need to panic if you're Ayersville. Kraft had the seal. The pass was a little bit inside. And McGuire just picked up her third foul. Oh, what a great play that time by the sophomore. Olivia Farnham did a great job of, of trying to control the low block there, did a great job of, of getting that offhand in the passing lane, tipped it away, and then played strong, drew the contact. Boy, that's a break there for the Bulldogs. See if they can maybe make some hay here with Mabel McGuire going to the pine. Waldron checks in. Joined by Sheets up top. The second half of this defense, Waldron, Kraft, and Schindler, who is still scoreless on the night after putting up 20 on Wednesday. Ball is deflected. Another turnover. Schindler. Calm and cool. Is she going to take it to the iron? She gets cut off. 
Now if you're Ayersville, run your offense. Kraft inside, outside. Schindler posting up. Waldron can take it off the drive. Manning from distance. Pure. It's a long two. Or is it? No. Nope, they're going to give her a three, a Premier Bank three. Yeah, that was a Premier Bank three, the third of the night. Oh, and look at Schindler. Turnover. Now, two on one. Does she want to take it? Going up with the left hand. The tide has turned at the 333 mark, and Coach Carrier knows it. She needs a timeout. Wow, a 12-0 run here by Ayersville in the first four and a half minutes, and they have taken control here up by seven. Throw a piece of red meat at half court because Ayersville smells blood in the water. 3.33 left to go in the third quarter. 26-19. We're back with more on DC TV Sports. Three thirty-three left to go in the third quarter. It is a 12-0 run for Ayersville to start the second half. They trailed by five at the intermission. They now lead 26-19. Taylor Kraft, despite her struggles at the free throw line, eight points. And Scoop, you've got her for double-digit boards, correct? Yeah, I've got her for 11 rebounds, uh, just one below her average. Uh, certainly uh, something we're used to seeing. Now the question is, how does Edgerton respond? Low block, spin move, block, oh, a late whistle. Crap forces a smile. That draws a chorus of boos from the Pilot Faithful. Yeah, not a popular call, but I think that was a correct call. You know, Kraft had excellent position. All she had to do was stay straight up. She got a little bit too uh, anxious there, brought the hand down. Even though she had a lot of basketball, it's going to end up being a, a freebie opportunity for the Bulldogs, and they end that 12-0 run here to start things out in the second half. Kepler, a 58% free throw shooter. She's 100% here, and the first points of any kind in the second half come at the 3-11 mark for Edgerton. And Edgerton has to find a way to keep Ayersville off the glass. The Pilots, 15 offensive rebounds to Edgerton's three, and two of those three for Edgerton gave, came on their second possession of the game here tonight. Kraft, high blocks, kicks it out. Far corner, Sheets off the heel of the iron. Ball being tapped around. Picked up in a rare fast break opportunity for Edgerton, and Swank wants to slow it down. She'll back it out. Two and a half minutes left to go third quarter. A 12-0 run, normally you would think would put a team away, yet if you look up at the scoreboard and you're Edgerton, you're only down by five. That was a heat check, out of bounds, Ayersville basketball. Yeah, and that's something Farnham can do. That time she was able to create a little space there uh, with a step back, but you can see she's had to work extra hard tonight. You know, the more, majority of her shots have been right on line, but short here this evening. I think you credit that Ayersville defense for that. Edgerton started this game in a box and one. They are staying in a box and one. Sheets, Manning with five on the night. Waldron puts it on the floor. This is where she's at her best. Partially blocked off the side of the backboard. It will be Bulldog basketball. Well, that's a much needed stop there by the Bulldogs. Again, uh, just down five. You know, nothing's gone their way in this third quarter, but they can end on a little run here. That could be that shot in the arm they need heading into the fourth quarter. Now under two minutes left to go in the third quarter. Ayersville's defense, they've hung their hat on it all season long. It has been nothing short of spectacular so far here in the third quarter. Look at that. Tremendous D by Schindler with the strip. Oh, jump ball the call. You can see Ayersville's fans about to explode, thinking that was going to be a foul. Instead, it's a jump ball. And it's impressive uh, what Schindler's able to do. Right now, Ayersville locked in 1-1. They're not running the second defender at Farnham. 
Schindler's been more than able to hold her own, yep. keeping her away from the rim. Swank kind of east-west. Right now, the entire offense for Edgerton in the second half has been moving east-west. Long three, Kraft with another block. It comes down into the hands of Swank. This one off the mark. They are battling for it underneath, and we're going to have a foul, I believe, on the Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah that, that time that's going against Stu. Show some aggressiveness going to the offensive glass. They did get a second opportunity, but not a third as Ayersville's able to corral it. They draw the contact, and that was a four-team foul on Edgerton, so last minute, the Pots will be in the penalty. And they also look like they're going to take the air out of the basketball. They have spent a ton of energy in this previous seven minutes. Looks like they will work for the final shot unless they get something back door. You know, they've had a 12-2 quarter. They'd like to finish on a bang right here, but they're more than content to shorten this Ooh. thing out, play for the last shot. Sheets had a lane if she'd wanted it. Kraft inside, outside. Waldron eyeing a three. Air mails at Kraft. Tried to tap it to herself, couldn't do so. So now the question is, does Edgerton want to work for the final shot? Or do you draw something up for a quick hitter? Well, they've had their struggles here, so I think you have to maybe try to find a way to get some touches inside, but they're really continuing to dog Farnham. Oh, Stute set a massive screen on Schindler, and we're going to have a foul away from the basket, about 25 feet on Sheets, and Coach Nicely is not happy. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that foul. Being very aggressive, getting a lot of ball pressure. They still had one foul to give, so... Even though, once again, not a popular call here to Hanger, probably the right call now Edgerton, I would think, would try to hold out for the last shot here as we're under the 22nd mark. Sheets went under the screen. That's just great ball movement, and the bunny got missed. Stoop will go to the line. Kennedy Stoop stayed with it. Yeah, credit to Senior once again. Uh, getting position inside. Had the look she wanted, couldn't get it to go, but a strong offensive rebound. The second here in the last two possessions for Edgerton, it gives them a shot in the arm here, the chance to cash in from the charity stripe. First one, string music up and in. Stu a 58% free throw shooter. Trying to hit here and pull her team to within three. Sets, releases, it's a little long. Whoa, the outlet bounces off the back of Manon's head. Nice give and go. Manon can't find the range on the breakaway layup. Stewart with a strong board underneath. Three quarters court shots off the mark. Sauce for the goose. Edgerton with a 3 0 run to end the third quarter. They have pulled back to within four. It becomes an eight minute ball game. Don't you go anywhere. Fourth and final quarter when we come back. Ayersville 26, Edgerton 22. You're watching DCTV Sports. We come out of that first insurance group timeout. The final eight minutes on the scoreboard. That's all that separates one of these two teams from a date in the first round of the districts next Thursday night against either Montpelier or Antwerp at the Dog Pound in defiance. Brent Balbinot alongside Scoop Miller. Get you a quick look at your Mark Motes Ford stat summary. Let's start with what you've got. I'm still working on points here, bud. Well, Fred they turned it over six times there in that third quarter. Led to four points for Ayersville. Meanwhile, the Pilots, after nine first-half turnovers, just one turnover in that third quarter. Rebounding-wise, Ayersville had nine rebounds, four being offensive there in that third quarter. Meanwhile, Edgerton with eight rebounds on the night. Ayersville... Out rebound the Bulldogs 30 22. Oh, beautiful move by Schindler. Stop and pop in the middle of the paints. Well, that's just her fourth point, but they would love to get her untracked. And no better way to do it than your first possession. Ooh. All right. 
I'm going to ask you this, and it's not a critique of the officials, but when you have basically two players in between your line of sight and the lane, and they both have their back to you, did he really get a good look at that to make an accurate call? Well, that, that's uh, that's something I can't answer from up here, but <laughs> certainly. Because you don't want to get a technical from the broadcast booth. I get it. Falling down. Man, they have let them play tonight. It has been as physical as we've seen all year, and that one's go off the fingertips, and we've got Swank down. She's still down. You heard that massive thud when she fell down and the ball was loose, and I think she may have gone down face first. And they are going to tend to her. But, oh, my goodness, you heard that Basically, the slap of skin on the floor. And right now, having a chat with her, making sure that she knows where she's at. Concussion protocol is most likely going to go into play here. We will keep it here as we finish up our Mark Motes Ford stat summary. She rolls over and appears to be okay. Actually, it looks like they may be looking at a leg or an ankle. Leading all players tonight, Taylor Kraft. She has 10. She was two for four from the free throw line in that third quarter to go along with a basket. You had her unofficially for 11 boards too, correct? Yes, I did. You know, she's really been a force. She's really stepped up, and I really like how they've made some adjustments at halftime to get her a little bit more involved. And uh, wow, she has really uh, risen to the occasion. Well, I didn't I mention it back in the first quarter after her very first basket. She's got to make her money tonight down low, and she has done that. As Coach Carrier starting to stand up, they are continuing to work on Swank. Meanwhile, Casey Everts has checked into the Bulldog lineup. Now she's going to, to get up. Swank. And nice will she be able her. to put any weight on that foot? We'll see. She gets a round of applause. But right now, she has yet to take a step. So that would be a huge loss because there's your starting point guard. Scoop, she has four points, but she's done a great job of directing traffic tonight as she, well. She really has. And in Ayersville, to their credit, they've made a nice adjustment on Swank here in the second half. Oh, they're going to carry her. Now she's smiling. Look at that. Farnham's going to carry her across the threshold and to the bench. Oh, a little lighthearted moment in the middle of, obviously, huge disappointment for her. But hopefully she's okay. And they're going to walk her, I think, are they going to take her to the locker room or just to the end of the bench? Okay. After all of that scoop, it was a turnover. So Ayersville with a chance to add to a 28-22 lead. Schindler has found herself in the second half. She only has four. She averages 13 and a half. They have done a great job on her. Bell McGuire still sitting on the bench with three fouls. As that's a rare three. Offensive board by Sheets. Nice dish to Manon, and that's a heads-up play to kick it out to Brown. Schindler trying to post up, but she's got Garishitz all over her. And this one tipped out of bounds. It will remain pilot basketball. All right, so how has Ayersville attacked that box in one to be so successful in the second half? They've done a nice job of trying to get uh, Kraft some touches in the middle and asking her to really go one-on-one. -on -one. The fact that they're so locked in on Farnham Schindler took a three. The roof would have come off this place if she had hit that. Instead, the lead remains six. And right now, Garishutz running the point. Ayersville still in that man-to-man. -man. Step back three is a long one, and a long board kicks out to Schindler. And wow, they are coming up, getting on the ball, and that's going to be a foul. And that looks like number 21, Olivia Farnham. Yeah, that time uh, the long shots being long rebounds. Pilots did a nice job protecting the basketball. The Bulldogs tried to double team there, forced a tie up. But that time, Farnham gets a piece of the arm. And now Ayersville trying to get a little separation here a couple minutes into this fourth quarter. Manon kicks it out up top. Bell McGuire is checked back into the game with three fouls. Oh, nice give and go. Look at that in the land of the Giants off the mark. Manon always knows where to be. Kirsten Manon. Great job by Manon there. Anticipate the rebound on the backside and the 17th offensive rebound for Ayersville tonight. Farnham was stripped by Manon, but luckily right back to Stoop. On the drive, bodies hitting the deck. Who's this against? Is it Manon or Kraft? Or anybody? Well, nice job. Nope, by just the out of bounds off the knee scoop. 
starting to attack the rim a little better. They've been going too much east and west here in this second half. That time they try to get uh, downhill to the rack. Knocked off a pilot. Bulldogs were running out of bounds underneath set. Ball loose. That foul was against Manon, and this one's going to go against Laney Sheets. You can tell by the frustration on her face. It's her second. Waldron will check back into the ball game. Sheets will catch a seat on the bench. A great job by Edgerton. That pass was really not ideal, but they did a great job of, of playing strong with the ball. When you do that, you've got a much better chance of drawing the contact and getting that call. Kepler checks in for Garishitz for Edgerton. Edgerton only able to manage three free throws so far in the entire second half. On the drive, beautiful spin. Kraft is there to give Kepler another facial. Well, that's a big reason right there. You know, Kepler has done a nice job of getting to the rack, but you're going to have to start Man. ball faking Taylor Kraft because she is really loading up. Long three by Farnham. It's off the front of the iron. Nice job by Stute. Farnham unchecked at the top of the key. Around the world, it kicks out. She's wondering, what have I got to do to get one to fall? Schindler got bumped from behind. Coach Nicely is livid. He thought that was a foul. They play on. Farnham blocked by Bell McGuire. Oh, my, and they're going to call her for a foul. A credit Edgerton defense. They forced a turnover, something they haven't done much here in the second half. Just a second Ayersville turnover, and <laughs> Farnham attacking off the three there. And again, anytime you come from behind like that on a three point shot and you bring the arm down, I think the official's going to call that every time. So, three opportunities coming up for Farnham. The first one up and in. She's their top shooter from the charity stripe at 76% on the season. That's her first point of any kind in the second half. And she's almost automatic as she drains her second. McGuire with four fouls will come out. Sheets immediately back in. How long can you leave your starting point guard on the bench, Scoop? Well, I think you've got to get to Molly Jolliver, especially when you've got a tight ball game. So look for, uh, look for her to get back in uh, really soon here and try to get every second you can. 30-25, lead cut to a handful. Waldron on the drive. Sheets from the elbow kicks it out. They're daring Waldron to shoot from beyond the arc. Right now, if you're Ayersville, you're in no rush, are you? Just run your offense. No, get the look you want. You know, you're going you're gonna to run your offense, but get the high percentage shot. And there's a catch Man and in shoot for rhythm. three. Nothing doing. Kraft had it and lost it. Oh, she was about to go back up for what would have been probably an easy garbage putback. Yeah, that time the Bulldogs dodge a bullet because she gets a rebound right there. Boy, that's going to stretch it out to a three-possession game. Instead, look at brings Allie it up. Schindler waiting at half court scoop. Wow. How gassed is she, and yet getting down into that great defensive position. Down the left side of the lane, Manon will tie her up, or they're going to call a foul. Yeah, they're going to get Manon there on the yard. Oh, my goodness. Coach Nicely wanted to travel. The fans wanted a jump ball, but instead it's going to be a foul, and that's Manon's third. This will send Ava Gisagi, the sophomore, a 71% free throw shooter to the stripe. Benz sends, goes begging off the left side. A total of six points so far in the entire second half for Edgerton. After leading by five at the intermission, she misses both. Schindler with another board. And timeout being called. We'll take a first insurance break as well. Crunch time when we come back. 421 left to go in the ball game. Advance and survive. Pilots 30, Bulldogs 25. You're watching DC TV Sports.
Oh, there you get a good look at the student section for Ayersville. Many of them, the boys' basketball team, they will be right here next Wednesday night for opening round district playoff action, and we will have that game for you right here on DC TV Sports. But right now, the girls trying to hold on. The number two seed getting everything they can handle and more from seven seed Edgerton. Yeah, this has been a great game. Uh, both these teams have left it out there. Both these teams want to continue to put the uniform back on and extend their season. Schindler off a nice craft screen all the way to the iron. Count it, and one coming. Yeah, great execution now the out of bounds play as the Pilots run a set there, and they have a ball screen on Schindler. And boy, you give her a little space. She's going to the iron. And now she'll have a chance to go for the end one. That's a huge hoop right there to get this up to three possession. She's a 73% free throw shooter, and that's pure. She had 20 Wednesday night. She's got seven now, but that is a huge three-point play to stretch the lead to eight. And she comes up with a steal here. Nobody in front of her. Easy pickings. Hell, points for the defense will win you a lot of games, and that's where Ayersville's got it done. And Edgerton's going to burn a timeout. 35-25. Coach Carrier realizing now with under four minutes left to go and down 10, this is it. Yeah, no doubt about it. And what a response here by Ayersville. After the coach nicely timeout, it took 24 seconds to put on a 5-0 run. And just like that, we've got a double-digit game here just past the midway point of this fourth quarter. Still nothing decided. I've seen, as you have, a lot of crazy stuff happen in even half this amount of time. But right now, if you are Ayersville, the last thing you want to do is foul. Just keep You're playing exactly tough right. D. And you really have to lock in on Olivia Farnham, you know, especially with the fact that uh, Ava Swank has gone down here with an injury. Yep. And uh, right now, Farnham, though, she has the ability to drain a couple quick threes that can turn the tide in a matter of seconds. Stute really being hounded by Manning. And uh, travel going to be the call. It won't go down in the books or the highlight reels, but Kirsten Manning's defense just forced that. Well, you're right. You know, that's a turnover that did not happen in the first half. And credit to Ayersville and, and certainly Manning and company really starting to D things up. Another forced turnover. Crap, turnout. another screen. Schindler blows by everybody. She's now got nine in the fourth quarter alone. That's the same play they ran out of the set. Oh, look at that. Oh, Waldron. Nobody in front of her. Sophomore finishes. And the points from the defense starting to mount up here for the pilots who are starting to taste it here a little bit at the hangar. If you weren't here and simply opened up the box score tomorrow, you would have no idea how close this ball game has been. And the Ayersville defense has simply put on a clinic here in the fourth quarter. They have. Remember, Ayersville was behind the entire first half and uh, a big part of that third quarter as well. But they have really found their stride here. On the drive, banked in over Taylor Craft. Boy, that's a tough shot there by Clara Gershutz that time. High Archer off the window. She's that got eight on the night. The first two of the second half. Still a double-digit deficit. And right now, looks like Ayersville is in absolutely no rush. At what point, if you're Edgerton, do you have to come out and foul? Well, Extend you got to come out and foul right away. You have two fouls to give, so you want either a quick steal or a quick foul. Almost a quick turnover as they were trying to force it into Kraft. And they do get the foul. This one's going to go against Garishitz. Yeah, great job by the pilots. You know, they're playing very cerebral out there. They've got the lead. They know the clock's their friend. That time, very patient. They draw the contact, and Ayersville's going to burn another timeout. We'll take one with them, a first insurance group timeout. 2.22 left to go in the ball game. Pilots 39, Bulldogs 27. We're back on DC TV Sports.
Well, there you get a good look at the Ayersville huddle. We're looking at Megan Keesler, who's joking with somebody in the stands. I don't know if she's flirting with a sibling, maybe a young kid. But right now, about as loose as you can possibly get as you take a look at Edgerton's huddle. And the reality may be slowly setting in. Once a five-point lead at the half has now turned into a 12-point deficit with just 2.22 left to go. Now we saw that Ayersville came out a little bit tight tonight, and uh, Edgerton really came to play a solid game plan. But uh, you know, once they've hit a couple shots here in the third quarter, we're seeing the Ayersville team we've seen all season long. Yep. Their defense has really sparked this uh, turn of events here. It's a reason right now they have the basketball up 12 here as we approach the two-minute mark of this contest. They're backing it out. They're all not quite four corners, but scoop. They're just stretching the floor, and Edgerton has elected so far not to foul. Yeah, they're going to have to start fouling right away here. You just do not have over 30 time seconds here. have ticked off the clock. Uh-oh, gambling for the steal. Manning goes in and misses. Guess who's there? Kraft with the garbage put back. Yeah, another offensive rebound. The, the points from the defense and the second chance points have really been about 85% of Ayersville's offense tonight. I think we've got our player of the game for Steichman Automotive, and she's wearing number 24 for Ayersville. I've got her for a dozen points. I know we had her for 11 boards at the half alone. She might be flirting with a triple-double. She's had blocks. her uh, share of blocks here tonight. Got to be approaching 10. Oh, that's a sweet-looking jumper by Olivia Farnham. Yeah, you just can't stop that right no. there. When she gets that deep, that mid-range pull-up jumper, her elevation, boy, she's got a sweet stroke out there. Schindler will back it out, and now they come out and foul. This one will be Garishitz, her third. That was the last foul Edgerton had to give, but now they're down to just 70 seconds here and still down a, a dozen points. So right now they need full denial. They don't get the steal right away. You have to foul. Try to extend this game. Quick foul. They're going to put Kraft to the line. And I would say that's exactly who you want to yeah. foul if you have to uh, kind of pick your poison. Uh, she's a 51% free throw shooter. No, they're going to put Waldron at the line. All right, Kendra Waldron will go to the stripe. She is a 45% free throw shooter. First is up and long. Look how far off the line she stands, Scoop. About three feet. Yeah, that's, that's not a 15-foot free throw by <laughs> any stretch. <laughs> she's closer to the uh, three-point line than the foul line. Well, she's got six on the night. And with under a minute left to go. Schindler with another steal. And this is a heads-up play by the senior to just slow it down. The well, only question is, does Edgerton want a foul now? And the fans slowly rise to their feet. Man, did they get a push tonight. But the number two seed in this bracket responded and with vigor in the second half. Yeah, th you know, this is uh, this is impressive here for Ayersville. You know, something we're used to seeing, but, you know, you're always going to be tested in a tournament. So sometimes a game like this, I think, can help you down the road understand the importance of, ladies, we got to play every minute. Yeah. We don't have to play perfect every minute. But we've got to play hard every minute, and there's a lot of positive they can take from this impressive come-from-behind win here tonight as they're just 38 and a half seconds away from closing out the deal. Sheets makes one of two. We've got a couple substitutions as Brown and Andy Zartman have checked in. Long three off the mark. It was airmailed. We've got some substitutions now as well for Edgerton as Caitlin Burke will check in for Garishutes. And that is a tough walk when you're a senior. And now the emotion kicking in is she's hugging Root, or pardon me, Stute, and they know it's over. And that is a huge embrace. The emotions are raw. At the other end of the gym, it is all elation. Final 10 seconds ticking off the clock. Survive and advance. Concern at the half, 
has turned into all smiles and celebration at the end of the game. They have earned the right to wear the uniform one more time. It will be the first round of districts, and it will be next week. They had to come from behind and make no mistake. Edgerton made them earn it. But Ayersville's defense, they've hung their hat on it all season long, and they rode it to a strong second 16 minutes as the Pilots knock off the Bulldogs 43-29. We'll take a first insurance group timeout. We'll be back with your Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show right after this. You're watching DC TV Sports. Welcome you back to the hangar as Ayersville had to come from behind 43-29. They are going to pose, looks like at half court, and then walk to the other end of the hangar to begin the celebration of cutting down the nets. And Scoop, before we go any farther, you have to tip your cap to Coach Carrier and the Bulldogs. As before we do that... <laughs> That was the biggest exhale I think I've seen in a long time. We'll give you a little bit of slack there. You want a seat there, Coach? You okay? I'm all right. All right. Well, I said it Wednesday night, but I'll say it again tonight. Before we go any farther, you took the biggest, baddest shot that the Bulldogs could give you down oh, by yeah. five. You tip your cap to, to Coach Carrier and the Bulldogs. They made you earn this one oh, tonight. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they had a good game plan, and uh, – I knew sooner or later it was going to be a game where we couldn't throw it in the ocean. And <laughs> we couldn't throw it in the ocean beginning of the game. And, uh, yeah, they played very well, you know. And then the halftime we told them, hey, you know, we're right there. As bad as we played, we're right there. Then we come out in third quarter and change the momentum. And we put Allie, we made an adjustment, put Allie on Barnham. And she's a great player, but Allie's got a lot of length, yep. strength, talent. So, she basically, uh, we held her in check the second half. So. Defense into offense, and I know we talked about that. That's yes. the mantra for this team. But offensively, what adjustments were you making to attack that box and one? Well, we told them we got to set some screens up top for Allie. And I said that beginning of the game, but we sort of didn't really do it. But we got, once we did it, we freed up Allie a little bit. And then we got some easy shots. Uh, we got to get Allie the ball in the middle of the paint. Once she gets the ball in the middle of the paint, we're good. So. Well, Tim, as impressive as those offensive adjustments were in the second half, I, I thought the defensive adjustments were even better because you, know, you guys came into the night holding teams under 30 points in 10 of your last 13 games. And I look up with a couple minutes to go there in the first half. Everton already has 17 points. They had 19 and a half in the second half. You guys turned them over. I had them for just three turnovers the first half, but you guys forced 12 Turnovers the second half, a lot of those Good. live ball turnovers that led to runouts. What was what was it that changed for the pilots defensively in that second half? Well, we just told them, like I said, the second half, we got to get more into them a little bit. We were sort of just, I think they started off so well, and it, it shocked us. I think mm -hmm. we caught us off guard, and uh, some of us didn't know how to react. And then uh, once we got, you know, in the ha second half, once we got a couple points down, we get tied, went up. Then I think all the confidence came back, and then I think they knew, you know, we'd be in good shape. So I think the, the defense, I mean, we play great defense. We just got to play it for four quarters, you know. But like I said, give them a ton of credit. They played hard. I know you got to get down there and cut down the nets. Two things, though. Two words first. Taylor Kraft. We, th we think she may have hit a triple-double with blocks 
as well as boards and rebounds. When you struggled, she stepped up to help carry oh, that load. Yeah, she did a great job inside. I thought, you know, some of the calls were a little bit, ah, I don't know, but um, we just got to make more foul shots, too, <laughs> and that would help a lot. So Now you're getting ready to head to the dog pound yep. next week. Yep. Does it matter who you play? Nah, we'll, we'll play anybody. I know who we could play. It could be Antwerp, I would think, but Montpelier's not a bad team, you know, and uh, Mike's going to have them ready over there for, you know, for uh, Montpelier. So either one, it doesn't matter. It's going to be play. strong no matter who. We will be there as well, right. Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Coach Nice is going to – I think we let him catch his breath a little bit there, Scoop, but he's got to go down and cut down his section of the net. What we're going to do is take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll have our Mark Motes Ford stats summary. We'll have our Steichman Automotive Group player of the game, although I don't think there's really any secret who that's going to be tonight. We've got a whole lot more coming. The Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show continues right after this on DCTV Sports. There you take a look at the nets being cut down. They had to earn it tonight, but they are through sectionals and into the first round of districts next week. It will be either Antwerp or Montpelier, the winner of that game. But you heard Coach Nicely say, it doesn't matter. We'll play whoever. The, the wheat separates itself from the chaff at this point in time. First round, maybe you have a few upsets. Unless you've got a team that just comes out of nowhere, Scoop, you're looking at now the best of the best from this point moving forward. Yeah, you should be. You get to the district tournament, you know it's going to be a quality opponent. And really, as Tim said, it doesn't really matter who you're playing. You get to play. So no matter who it is, no matter where it's at, you're going to be there. You're going to throw out uh, your best punch. You're going to try to keep extend that season. And for Ayersville, what a good one it's been. They continue. And there you see Coach nicely. And the crowd erupts. That never gets old. All right, our Mark Motes. Ford stat summary, let's run it down. First for the visitors, 10 points for Olivia Farnham. Held to half a dozen under her per game average of 16. But again, Scoop, she was held scoreless in that third quarter. Particular, Allie Schindler's defense. Just a tremendous effort. Yeah, they did exactly what they had to do in Olivia Farnham because Farnham's a very special player. She can hurt you in so many ways, but what they did, they made her work awfully hard just to get the ball in her hands. And every shot, every dribble she took tonight was contested. You're not going to shut her out, no. but they made her work for each and every point. And that's what you have to do when you're going against a superstar player like Farnham. There you go. Our cameraman, Will, kind of having to elbow in. He's got a post up down there, but that's a good-looking shot of this year's sectional champs. And... We'll wait and see how long it will take before their feet come back down to the floor, but they have deserved this one. Rounding out the scoring for the Bulldogs, it really drops off considerably, but off the bench, Clara Garishitz with eight. One point for Kennedy Stoop. Four points for Ava Swank, and we will wish the very best for the Bulldogs point guard as she had to come off the floor with, what, roughly half of the fourth quarter left to go. It looked like she either wrenched a knee or twisted an ankle. A deuce apiece then for Casey Everts, Ava Giesegui, and Gretchen Kepler. On the flip side, for the Pilots, Taylor Kraft. 12 points. How many boards did you unofficially have her for? Well, I had her end up with 14 boards. Oh, and, man. Uh, I, I know she had a triple-double one way or the other. She, If she did not get it in blocks, she certainly got it in shots changed because <laughs> she was that uh, inside force that Edgerton, you know, they can allow their offense inside with the likes of Gretchen Kepler and Olivia Farnham. But, boy, points in the paint tonight for Edgerton were few and far between. Rounding out the scoring for the Pilots, 
Allie Schindler almost got to her average. She was held scoreless at the half. She finishes with 11. Kirsten Mannon with a quiet but very important nine points. Belle McGuire with five, including a three. This is a kid that only shoots 15% from beyond the arc. Four points for Kendra Waldron and two points off the bench for Laney Sheets. One last piece of unfinished business before we put a wrap on things. It's time for our Steichman Automotive Group player of the game. Scoop, there is no question who it is tonight. Number 24, the 6'1 center. Granted, she's going to be playing volleyball at the D3 level when she heads to Ohio Northern, but tonight she's still in an Ayersville basketball uniform, and there you take a look at the Southern Belle, Taylor Kraft. I tell you, she was phenomenal tonight. You know, as deep as this Ayersville team is, if she's not here tonight, this game goes to the Bulldogs Absolutely. because she did so many things well. I mean, yeah, she got some good points inside, but her defense just not only rejected shots, she pulled down those rebounds, she changed shots. I love how she ran the floor. She had a couple steals as well mixed in there, but another stellar performance by Taylor Kraft, and she is our Steichman Automotive Group player of the game. That's a good look at her, and she just stands out above everybody else, but tonight, even more. That is going to do it for our coverage here this evening. Scoop, appreciate you throwing on the headset. Look, we're going to be back at the Dog Pound next Thursday. It will be Ayersville against either Montpelier or Antwerp. We will be at Upper Sandusky on Tuesday night as the Defiance boys will make the road trip in their opener of the playoffs. Then right back here at the hangar the following night on Wednesday as Ayersville's boys will also be opening up the postseason. you got to love this time of year. You really do. It's so much fun, uh, you know, not just for us, but the players. You know, this is really the great time for the players. We saw it here tonight. Here's with this impressive win. But we've got some great basketball next week. You don't want to miss it. Get to the game, support these kids, and if you get a chance, watch it on DC TV. Big thank you going out to our crew. A tremendous job tonight. Josh, Alex, Tim, Trevor, we had Will. We've got Jeff coming up and taking care of things. I love it when he runs the camera because basically he just stretches out his wings and we get a little bit more space up in the top row. For Scoop Miller, I'm Brent Falbinot. A big thank you going out to all of our underwriters for helping make this broadcast a possibility. Folks, I say it time and time again, but if you enjoy our coverage of area high school sports, walk through those businesses' doors, patronize those businesses, and let them know how much you appreciate their helping us do what we do. Also, a big thank you for you, the fan, for tuning in. I'm Brent Palvinot again for our entire crew. Final score again tonight from the hangar, 43-29. Ayersville survives and advances. We will talk to you next week on DCTV Sports.